Good morning, um, ladies. Um, nice being here. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning. Well, Ayuba is on set today, so it's one lady and one man. Of course, Mr. Kevin is joining us via phone, and the last time you joined us was two ladies, isn't it? Yeah, uh, two, uh, two ladies. Uh, I didn't know there's, uh, there's a change now. Uh, oh, so we, we, we alternate. We alternate uh, every now oh, and then. Yes. So good morning, Ayuba, the good. lady and the... Uh, <laughs> Good, good, good morning, good Mr. Morning. Kevin Fineface. I can see your fine face actually <laughs> from here. You can see my fine face. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we have a picture of you up, okay. of course, for for people to want to know who they are listening to. So we'll get right into the conversation. Economic restructuring. At at the first glance of that term, what comes to mind, and what are your thoughts, really, your first thoughts on the idea of it? Well, you know, at first glance, uh, what comes to mind is basically um, uh, Nigeria being, a, you know, a federation uh, is seeing that every state being able to economically manage what they have for their people, then in its own take care of the, the federal uh, by way of being necessary dues, uh, which was what we had during the regional system of government. Um, when we had independence. But that has gone. Now, we also have this challenge where uh, Nigeria is supposed to be a, you know, a, a, a federal government, a federal state, but not in practice because everything is centered, you know, um, just around the federal government, economically, um, security, and otherwise, which has now, you know, become more of uh, a problem for the nation than it would have served them for the better. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, as outcome of the meeting we saw uh, between the Southern Governors Forum uh, last two days, uh, some of the recommendations uh, that they made is kind of causing a lot of reaction. And one of those uh, recommendations is for the establishment of state policing, uh, review of revenue allocation formula uh, in favor of the sub-national governments, talking about the states, and the creation of institutions which legitimately advance uh, the commitment to and practice of true federalism. Now, for, for what I want you to talk about is the revenue allocation formula. Uh, in a federating system, in a federal republic, uh, you know, like Nigeria, what should be the practice when it comes to revenue allocation and what do we have at the moment? You know, um, when you look at the, the current um, setup that we have, revenues are regenerated you know, from the state, the federal unit, uh, but being taken and managed by the center. But imagine, um, I don't know where you, where are you from? Uh, is, uh, is that really necessary? <laughs> Just no, no, go ahead necessary. with your point. I need, to, I need to make a reference. Uh, no, no, no. You, you, you wouldn't. Of where you're from. You well, wouldn't. Say, look, I'm, I'm from River State. Um, River State supposed to be, you know, um, the state that generates 80 to 90 percent of the revenue that we have uh, in terms of our oil export. Now, at the end of the day, what do we have, you know, is that we have a situation where every money that is generated from the state goes to the center, and what comes back to the state is just a passive sum. So when you begin to look at such kind of, you know, um, arrangements, you automatically begin to deny states from fully enjoying their natural endowment and also being able to manage their own resources. As we speak currently, there are states in the north that have fully implemented uh, a type of restructuring uh, that allows them to fully implement uh, Sharia laws. And for those states, they don't get to allow people that you you know take alcohol. But revenues are generated from alcohol that is shared among the states and they also share from such you know, revenues. And that in itself is also a disservice. And so what the southern governors are actually clamoring for is to see that revenues, you know, are, are generated and 
at the same time, this thing, by this subnational, you know, government, uh, would that necessarily be cause for having, you know, FRS taking all of the fat that they would take from such, and at the end of the day, give it to states that don't generate anything, you know, um, from their own state, but then join from the revenues that are generated from other states. Okay, so uh, how has this impacted on our economic growth as a country, our economic, uh, you know, uh, uh, diversification drive, you know, because uh, I would believe that virtually every state in Nigeria has something in that state, in, in sort of mineral resources that can be harnessed, you know, for that economic drive. So what is missing really? What, how is this kind of formula uh, derivation impacting on our economic growth as a nation? If we go, if you look at the status quo as it is now, you realize also that it has stunted the growth of the nation. Over dependency, you'll find every state at the end, at the end of the month comes to Abuja to collect their rations and go back to their state and not even utilizing the, the little that they've got to unnerve their potential to the state. I'll give you an instance. Ogi states, for instance, have about 27 natural mineral resources of highly economic value. But none of those resources, apart from, you know, limestone, not currently iron ore and all of that, that is coming up, that is being utilized effectively to better the loss of the people of Ogi state. A few years ago, um, I had a company that came in, an engineer that came in to want to invest in banana fishing culture. Research was done. The only place you could find a vegetable soil for banana fishing culture was in Kogi State. But due to certain peculiarities and politics and all of those things, uh, they could not really implement that. They already had stores with Tesco and all of those things, they could not implement that. If you travel from any good to George, you have about 3 trillion tons of uh, coal, not even an ounce used for anything. If you go to the northern part of Nigeria, apart from the fact that we have this history of the Ghana pyramid, the, the vast land could be told to be a river land for cash crops that can be exported out of Nigeria, not only just within Nigeria. If you go to the south, beyond oil that you have and gas, you also have other potential natural resources that could have been taken advantage of. Our tourist sector is completely gone. In the sense that no viable business is going around our tourist sector. We have areas, you know, places that could be visited to generate revenue. I've traveled, you know, and across the globe, and I could see many places that we travel to are places that were just created by the people and created some kind of myth around those places so that people when they come you can connect to those places and those are things that we should have taken advantage of don't even know what have given us so much money really generate so much revenue employ so many youth get off you know uh, this craze of insecurity would have been reduced to the various minimum because when the people are gainfully employed and empowered then they have no other business to do but that to still focus on their their, their responsibilities. Okay, um, if, if I may yeah. come in, if, if I may come in, would it be right to assume that you are of the opinion that we don't necessarily need to restructure or at least that is not the biggest problem we have in terms of the sharing formula, but it is the fact that we are yet to harness some of the potentials that are in our states. So maybe Based on what I get from your conversation so far, the emphasis should be on harnessing some of our potentials and not necessarily on the shared yeah, let formula. Me cut, let, me cut, let me cut in there. Uh, the Nigerian constitution, the 1999 constitution as amended, has been in operation today. It's the biggest problem of the country. Until that constitution is made away with, completely made away with, there's no need of amending or trying to review or no completely thrown to the garbage can. Until that is done, we're going to have a problem. The states cannot fully unnest their potential because of how the federal system is currently skewed. For instance, Zafara has a large deposit of gold and other, you know, stones in, you know, in, in that state. Niger State has platinum, gold and other things. Uh, but everything belongs to the federal government. 
mining is to the federal government. It's only until recently that the government is trying to see how they can issue license and all of those things. You notice what has been happening in South Korea, resulting to the issues that we're having today, is as a result of mining, illegal mining. As you go on illegal mining, see where you have the people who do not have you know, the right laws guiding them, then automatically you allow the state to become a state of nature. So people begin to buy arms to protect their own corners. So you cannot unless those potential effectively when we have a constitution that gives so much power to the federal government, denying the state the opportunity to be able to unless their own potential effectively. Yes, of course, the government, you know, um, the state government and the local government should have been more you know, responsive to the to the needs and desires of the people, but because of the way the system is skewed, everybody looks up to the federal government before things can be done. So if we, if we do away with the 1999 constitution, then have a completely new constitution that empowers the state and regions to function as they should have been functioned in 1963, Regional system is one of the most effective regional systems that Nigeria has actually ever been experienced. We saw what happened in the, in the western region, how Abulo was able to utilize resources within that zone to to develop the zone. So every state and every region will, will grow according to their own pace. Nobody is going to force anybody to grow and nobody is going to stop another person's growth as much as you desire. Like the northern states now that desire to implement full Sharia will be able to do that without, you know, recourse, or, you know, of, you know, inflicting, or inflicting injury on those who don't believe in the Sharia. Now, Sharia is implemented in the state. It's also implemented on those who are not even Muslims. It's supposed to be selective to Muslims, but it's also implemented on those who are not Muslims. Also, people who own power, for instance, are denied the opportunity of selling their drinks because Sharia is only implemented. And now that is also a conflict of the 1999 Constitution, but it's allowed to go on just like that. There are indigenous and citizens of the state who are not Muslim, but are automatically being under the same law. So we need to be able to sit down and say, look, let's rule, let's do this in this way. That every state, yes, needs to govern itself, but must do so with, you know, the, the mind of ensuring that every member of that, every citizen of that state, every citizen of the state is well taken care of, covered according to the laws of the land. So people get to know their involvement. So the state gets to know their involvement. Local people get to know their involvement. If it wasn't for the way the 1999 question is skewed, I, I think we wouldn't have been having the level of issues we're having today. Because it means that the states now will not be very responsible. Imagine a situation where the governor of the state is called the chief city officer of the state, but do not have, you know, commanding powers to give directive to the security agencies. They have to wait for Abuja. Of course, yes, All right. there are situations where politically, you know, they've been able to, you know, um, get their, get this security agent, establish the, the, the chiefs of the state to do one or two things, but the powers come from Abuja. Okay, so Kevin. There has to be some form of, you know, um, uh, 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 to be able to get that to happen so far. All right, Kevin. Uh, so, uh, we have seen the resolution by the Southern Nigeria Governors Forum, and we have seen endorsements as well uh, by lawmakers from that region. Now, do you see enough political will to make these changes, to make this thing happen? We have a constitutional review ongoing, and I am aware that before now, even before this constitutional uh, review, the last constitutional amendment we had these same issues were raised and some of the issues didn't see the light of day uh, when they got to the state level some of the some of the uh, bills that were passed by the national assembly were turned down at that level so do we have the consensus and do we have the political will to drive this process through i i, I think uh, the political will you know is um it, it depends on certain peculiarities uh, don't forget this um, state governors are also politicians whose uh, main focus is to protect their interests. If anything that will undermine their interests, of course, they will not like what we saw what happened with, you know, uh, the autonomy of the, uh, the state house of assembly, autonomy of the local government, all of those things were shut down in the last constitutional review that, you know, were done. Uh, the political way is not there. The reason why it's not there is also as a result of the fact that we have a constitution that 
gives room for such um, uh, dodging strategy by this state governor. If our constitution is clearly stated, and if the constitution is also stated that when when a state governor or a president fails to carry out his constitutional responsibility, it is also the fact that there is immunity, the mo immunity, the moment he leaves office, prison awaits him. There's a provision for it. So, if we change the constitution, I believe there will be the political way to carry out this thing, this consensus. Now, I like the fact that they came all together. I mean, the fact that they all came together, 17 state governors, coming, I mean, 50 state governors, you know, to 17 state governors, coming together to form this southern forum is a step in the right direction. It's commendable in the sense that it's not really easy to have different political parties to speak one voice. For their cause. It means that over the years, these people have been suffering in silence and their problems are peculiar and similar. There's no state that doesn't suffer from one form of insecurity or the other, and there's no state that doesn't suffer the invading, you know, uh, 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 there are terrorist headsmen, you know, killing and destroying farmlands and destroying people and taking over lands and all of those things. There's no state in Nigeria that doesn't suffer that as we speak. So if this is a common problem, then we have to use, they need a common strategy to be able to handle that. And one of the best ways that they've actually suggested, uh, uh, the ban on open business, everything they have been suggested, you know, recommended for the federal government's attention, can only be, you know, implemented while the federal government is listening here and there's an amendment of the constitution. Or else they, that can be implemented because all they've just done is to just make pronouncements. And the pronouncements do not hold what I want to do. They self understand the power they inherit in their states, in their different states, to formulate laws. Because the state has the power to formulate laws. Unfortunately, because of the way the, the system operates, Nigeria kind of operates an American style based governance where you have subjects and you have the rulers. So, in, in, even though we're in a democracy, in the psychology, in the minds of these governors, it's in the thinking of that subjection and domination. So they've not been able to implement this. A federal state implemented ban, you know, anti prison law, and it's causing a lot of problems. Every state has the right to formulate laws to govern their people, protect their people, and make certain provisions for enabling environment. Every state has the right to do so. But unfortunately also, the states are not implementing this for political reasons, and that's why they lack the political will. Uh, maybe because of party interest, or in order to be sure that they have and uh, the favor of the president, in quotes, because the president's policy is not seen as the president and elected president, is seen as the ruler of the country. So everybody wants to make sure that they, they kind of, you know, make things or do things that they will impress the president. But it's because the president is also not seen to be leading as a president. A lot of these, you know, different states are not beginning to find their forces by way of having this cohesive, you know, movement so that they can all speak one voice. Because right. they believe that, look, if the president is not showing up leadership, and that's what they have asked for, the president needs to have left the nation. All right. Uh, if the president has shown that, see, when, they, when the country lacks justice, when the country lacks fairness, when the country lacks equity and equality, with accountability, it gives room for anarchy. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Kevin. All right, uh, Mr. Kevin, uh, because of our time, we'll have to end this uh, right now. Thank you so much for coming on the program and sharing with us your thoughts on these uh, recent issues that we are talking about. Uh, we my, hope my, my pleasure. I would yeah. just believe that we'll drive on this point and that we'll make Nigeria better for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We appreciate it. We you appreciate so your time and your I efforts. Thank you, by your Thank you. Bye. All right. Well, there you have it, uh, Mr. Kevin Fineface, uh, public analyst, uh, talking to us about his uh, thoughts about the issue of economic restructuring you know, in Nigeria and, and how best we can move forward uh, as a country.